layer dimensionality gives you the ability to take a clip or to take say some text and actually make it stand out at the moment you can see I've used the, the event pan crop tool to crop this image inside the other image but it's flat it sits against the other image in a very flat way I could animate it across of course but at the moment it's not really doing anything except being there whereas if I were to use layer dimensionality I could add a drop shadow I can add a glow around it and I can just make it stand out and look that much more professional now layer dimensionality can be applied to any clip it can be applied to individual items you can even apply it through composite modes which we haven't dealt with yet to whole tracks but let's just show you on a clip now you can get to it through your video effects because it is actually a video effect and when you scroll down you'll find there is layer dimensionality and there are lots of presets note so there are presets that you can drag and drop onto the clip which will give you an immediate result we're going to work with the default and I'm going to show you what you can do however there is another way of doing it and that's if you are actually already in the event pan crop option area which we've been dealing with earlier just pull that out so we can see it all notice that hold the control key to make it stand out notice that you've got this button here which is actually kind of the same as this button here and so if I was to click this button here I can go and find layer dimensionality there and add it I'm going to click cancel and shut that down of course the other option is you simply do click this button here and it brings you again to that same box how are you going to find it layer dimensionality single click add okay or double click okay we'll add it but let's do it through the actual effects route this time take layer dimensionality drag and drop it onto the clip you see you've got the little plus button saying you can add it in click okay and there it is and this actually is the same box because note pan crop is here so when I click on pan crop there's my pan crop again I can zoom out click and zoom out and I can see where the pan crop is going on can even change it if I want okay so it's all there inside this box just move it so that it's a little bit to the side there we go it's all there inside the box and there is layer dimensionality now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the various sections that we've got and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the bar at the top and by double clicking the bar at the top we kind of minimize the size of the box and then pull it across holding the control key to stop it from going too far out the way there you go we've got them right next to each other and we can get a good idea of what's going to go on now it's best to view this if you want to see the best results to actually view it in best At the moment we're in preview and you can go down to best and auto or best and full now I'm not going to go there because this is an old computer and it takes a long time to actually get there but if you want to see the best results if I remember I'll try and do that at the end and you can see the end results so if you've got a good computer to see the best results for this do do it in best and full but I'm going to do it in preview and auto at the moment because you'll see the results a lot quicker so the first thing I'm going to add is a drop shadow which will make this item stand out from its background and it's done through the shadow menu click down I've got a drop shadow or an inner shadow an inner shadow brings a shadow inside the item a drop shadow puts it behind the item so if I click drop shadow you can see it sits behind the item so it's sitting behind the item but the problem is it is now conflicting with the shadows in the scene the shadow is going this direction which indicates that the Sun is shining onto this clip from up here whereas if we want this to be inside this composite we want it to follow the shadows which are going this way which tells us that the Sun is probably somewhere up here so I need to move the position of the light that's causing the drop shadow and that's done at the bottom with the light location and you can click here to change its location you can see that's changing it directly but you'll also see there's something here on screen it might be hard to see the screen recording software but you can see I can pull it around here and change where it's coming from and I can put it right over to one side if I like to try and get the same sort of look I don't want it too far say something like that possibly to get the right sort of look similar sort of look to the item that's in there so you can have a little play with the light to get the sort of result that you think is going to work best for you and you've got another couple of options here for changing how close the shadow is going to be to the item or if I put it right down how far away the shadow is to the item double click to reset that and you'll also see that you've got an option here for height so how high off overall is the shadow from the original so uh, do bear in mind that you have these different options I'm going to double click 
take it back and take this one back over here so it's roughly in the right place. There we go, so that's your drop shadow. You can make it a softer drop shadow by increasing the blur. So if you think that edge is too hard, or not hard enough, you change the blur level. So if I take it down to zero, you see we've got an absolutely sharp edge. If I take it right up to one, you see we've got a really soft edge. But in this particular example, it just kind of looks dirty. So you actually do want a pretty, a pretty strong edge to get the right result for what we're working with. Opacity is simply how much you see of it. At one, you see pretty much all of it. If I take it right down, say 46 or 0.46, that's just under half, and you can see it's far less obvious. But again, in this particular example, it kind of makes the background look dirty. So double click, take it back. So that's the drop shadow, which is brilliant. And we've seen how that's done. Shut drop shadow down and shut light location down, as I've dealt with those. Now we can talk about glow and emboss. Now glow are different types of glows. So you've got an outer glow, goes around the outside of the image, an inner glow for inside the image, and then we've got an edge glow that just goes around the edge, and we've got a jewel glow, which is two different colors, which is quite fun. And you can actually change those colors. I'm just gonna go for an, uh, an edge glow at the moment, so that's going around the edge, and clearly it's this color. Now, if that color's the wrong color, which this one is, you can click there, and you can say, really, I want it to be a different color. And it's wherever this item is, is where it will be. So you can shift it around. Also, you can shift the color. So if I want it to be blue, I want it to be a blue glow, you can see it's updated to a blue glow. If I want it to go to a green glow, updated to a green glow. However, if you've got something in the scene you want it to glow the color of, you can take the picker, and you can click and drag, say I want it to be that color, and you can see it's the color of the water, which isn't a bad choice, actually. And also, there are different ways of viewing the color swatch. You can choose from different ways of doing it. So HSL will be a different way of doing a similar sort of thing. So if you are used to picking colors in a different way, just bear in mind you've got different options as to how you can actually pick colors. But I'm going to stick with the, the default option there. Once you've finished, just click away and it's gone. So we can shut the glow down. Do have a slight glow, but the glow is the color of the water. So that fits in quite nicely. And then emboss. Now emboss is a way of really making it stand out, almost like it's plastic. So if I take emboss, you can pull it backwards, which is a slightly odd look, or you can take it forwards. And when I take it forwards, it's sticking up like a sort of a plastic item. You've also got roundness. So if I sort of start to play with roundness, you can see I'm rounding off these edges and making them sort of grow somewhat closer into the image. It makes them, it sort of gives it height, additional height really. And then you can also play with the light intensity and the light ambience. And if you pull the ambient light right up, it's almost like you're adding a, a white border around the item. And you can pull the white border up and almost create something that looks like a photograph stuck on something on top of your screen. Of course, it will still animate based on what you've done in your pan crop options. So you can still animate where it is and how it looks. And you can animate the settings inside of here. And in the next tutorial, we're going to have a little chat about animation so we've got a better idea of what these clocks mean and how we can animate inside an effect such as this powerful one, Layer Dimensionality. My name's Andrew Davis. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.